I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Jessica Thomas, who, as you know, is the executive editor of the Physical Review Journals. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. So give us a brief overview, if you would, of the Physical Review Journals and why they're so important to uh, the APS. Well, we have 14 journals in addition to a, a review journal and a magazine that is devoted to highlighting what's in the journals as well as other aspects of what's going on in the physics community. And I think those journals are important to the APS uh, because when you think about what researchers spend most of their time doing, it's, it's being in the lab, it's doing simulations, it's thinking of creative things in physics. And to this day, journals, as much as they've changed throughout time, they still represent the place where you report and share all of that creative work. So give us a, a little bit of an insight to some of the, the more exciting science that you've published recently. Okay, uh, well, a, a lot of what uh, we have reported on lately has been in uh, quantum technology. You're seeing a lot of really exciting results there, uh, such as ways of protecting quantum bits, which are the, the units that store quantum information and make a quantum computer work. So uh, any ways that you can to protect these really fragile means of storing information helps you do quantum calculations uh, for longer time and more accurately. We're also seeing ways to make quantum simulations more efficient. And all of this work is helping to bring the reality of quantum computing closer um, you know, to, to actually being in existence. Uh, other kinds of things that we're seeing that I think hit kind of close to home are uh, physicists who are really trying to understand how models can be used to predict the way that disease spreads. And they're asking questions like, what kind of data do you need to make those models accurate? Uh, how far in, in, in the, to the future can those uh, models actually make reliable predictions? And then something that's maybe more, maybe it seems esoteric, more esoteric, but I think it actually can have some real world applications are ways that scientists are finding of taking individual atoms, bringing them together, storing them, trapping them, and actually studying how they behave. And some of the uh, really exciting stuff that's come out in the last year, ph physicists have been able to see phases of matter that, you know, up until now were only kind of like a dream in a theorist's head. And again, even though that sounds kind of abstract, I think the real goal of a lot of this work is to be able to create or mimic materials that people have been studying for many, many years, but are still trying to understand things like superconductors, which are obviously really important uh, for lots of different kinds of applications. One of the things that always kind of blows my mind when I come to the meeting is just the diversity of just the, the number of people, just all the subjects that are being discussed. How do you, in terms of your uh, editing the journals, how do you decide what to cover and what not to cover? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, well, you know, each journal uh, in the portfolio kind of has its beat. They have an area of focus. Some journals focus on a particular topic in uh, physics. Other journals uh, cover all of physics. And then there are various levels of uh, selectivity among all those journals. So basically when papers come in, uh, one of the things that a journal's editor has to do right away is not only assess the quality, but kind of decide whether that paper fits within the scope of the journal. So both its level of selectivity and also the areas of physics that it tries to serve. So Jessica, my final question is, uh, what is physics and how does it keep physicists up to date? So physics is the online magazine for the journals. And one of its big uh, purposes is to highlight the really big deal results that are coming out in the journals, kind of to help keep physicists informed about what's going on. You should be able to look back through uh, sort of the previous year of Physics Magazine and have a sense of what were the really big deal results that the journals published. At the same time, they also provide more conventional magazine material that you would find in a physics-focused magazine. So you'll find interviews with physicists, you'll find feature stories that look at various areas of research and how they're developing. You'll also find stories about how um, physics is influencing the arts and vice versa. So it's really meant to be a way to help physicists stay in touch with all the research that's going on, but also to kind of have an awareness of kind of the breadth and diversity and kind of just general creativity of the physics community. 
Jessica, thank you ever so much for uh, taking the time to uh, join us today. We, we really appreciate it and, uh, and best of luck. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.